Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is day two of Borders and Corners. Um, we're going to do the bottom section of our wall hanging, and we're going to turn it and do the middle section so you can see the complete process of quilting using Borders and Corners. Um, so let's jump in and get to it. I've already opened up my automation and I've set my safe area. I want to talk to you a moment about safe areas. Safe area is the quilting area that you can actually quilt on your quilt. Now, you don't want to, when you're setting your safe area and you're opening up, it, you want to move to off your quilt, okay, when you're setting it and onto the batting. So we always need to make sure that our, bat, our backing and our batting is wider and longer than our quilt top. And you're going to move it up and off onto your quilt um, batting and backing and set your safe area. Then you're going to touch the screen and it's going to set, that sets the width. Then you're going to move down again, down to the bottom and off of your quilt top onto the batting. And then you're going to tap on the screen and that's going to set the depth. So the first one is setting the width of your quilt. And if you're quilting an edge to edge quilt, you want to quilt off your quilt and onto the batting and backing. Um, so you want to make sure that you're tacking down your quilt so that as it moves across and back and forth, it's not catching up underneath and folding the quilt and catching your foot. Um, been there, done that, not fun. So, just remember when you're setting your safe area also is to make sure that you have enough distance between this take up pole back here and your top so it can so you can set your safe area correctly. Otherwise when you go to quilt it'll be a big red screen and tell you you're out of your safe area. So you'll need to make some adjustments. But in the automation you can reset it. You don't have to get completely out and come back in. Um, and that's in the toolbox. Great little feature on, in the automation. So, I have my opening screen and remember you have border style choices and we're going to choose corner right across from minor. So, border style, it says right here, the blue box says border style and placement. So, I want to change my border style right here on these little icons to corner and see how the screen changes. Now you have your corner section and your center section. So now I have finished quilting my top border. Now it's time for me to quilt my bottom border. So over here, um, you have your top. And if you tap on that little icon right there, it'll change it to bottom. And see how the screen flipped? And now we have our bottom border. Okay, so now we need to place um, remember these little pink nodes right here are your placement nodes, just like in Select and Sew or when you go in place your edge to edge design. This little screen right here is going to allow you to place it. So we're going to move to our outer left corner first. And we're going to tap on our little pink dot. So now it knows on the screen that I have Place that dot. Now, remember, I told you we need to align it so it's nice and straight. So if I move it straight back towards the take up pole, remember this is the opposite direction. So we're going opposite of what we did yesterday. And I tap on this little pink dot right here, this placement dot, it's going to align it. So you're placing it first, then you're aligning that um, edge. So it's nice and straight. So now I can go and do my inner corner of my border. Oh, wait. Sorry. I did a boo-boo. Okay. <laughs> I forgot that I wanted to do my little red section first. Okay. So I'm going to replace my um, corner and do it for this little red section. Um, we always want to quilt from top to bottom from the center out. So if I skip this, I don't want any little folds. So I don't want to do my outer border first. I want to do this inner border first. So, sorry. Um, just wanted you to be sure, I wanted to be sure that I corrected that. So let's go and set 
my inner border first, okay? So now I'm going to move this right here and I'm going to, let, we can reset this. So what I'm going to do is go and reset my patterns and I'm going to come up here in my toolbox and see in my toolbox it says reset all. I'm just going to reset them all, okay? So now I can go and do it correctly. So I'm going to come in here and another thing I wanted to show you was um, the needle jog on the 21 Pro. The Pro machines have this nifty little feature called needle jog and the needle jog actually helps you to bring the needle down without going back to the hand wheel and turning it so that you can jog the needle down towards the fabric just in increments and see how it's moving. And I don't want to take it any further because I don't want it to drag on the fabric, but it just is going to help me make my placement that much more even and better. And especially when I'm going to apply fabric comp. So let's place our inner border first, okay? Very important to work from the, the top to the bottom and the center out as you're working. So I'm going to place it. I'm going to place my pink dot. Now I'm going to align it. I'm just going to move it forward, make sure it's on that seam. And now I can do my inner border right here. And right here. And that's all the further I can go. So if I see that this is not going to fit and I need to roll it back. Um, I may have to roll it back because um, I might be too far in. I want to align it. And it's easy to skip a step, but if you try to make a habit of doing it in, a, in placing, placing it in a certain order, it will become easier and easier for you. Okay. So there's my intersection on my border. I don't really have a lot of room for a center border, so we're going to see how this turns out. This may not turn out <laughs> it, that great, but yeah, we're going to go for it. So anyway, now that I've placed it, I don't want to set a margin. I do want to go and get my pattern, so I'm going to come down here to number three over on the left side. Now I'm going to come over and tap on corner because I want to place my corners first. And I'm going to go up into my patterns because that's where they're located. And I'm going to pick the I Love Stars. That's the one I chose yesterday. And see how it placed it. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select by border. And remember, I have that autofill. So it's going to autofill it in. And it can only do one. So we're good to go. So now I can tap on Sew All. And then I'm going to quickly go around it with my fabric comp. And this time I have my needle down, so we're going to see how much better, more accurate I can get my fabric comp. And so I'm going to come into my plugins right here at the top right of my screen. I just tapped on it, and these are all your little plugins. And because we have the gold features, we have several. So I'm going to tap on fabric comp. And now I'm going to, instead of the top line with the, the top border, it's the bottom. This is the outer edge, so I'm going to just move along that outer edge, just right along that seam. And I'm going to go tap on it. And I, I'm telling you, the closer you get it, the more even, and it will stay in the lines that much better. Okay. So as you're moving across, just, all right, and now we can go to next, and now we're going to go down the side, plus, and again, you'll say, why do the sides? Well, your sides can be just as uneven as your top and bottom, so it's really important to move along the sides. Okay, and it doesn't say um, I'm out of the safe area, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to quilt that. So, and let's do next. I'm going to come in. Plus. Now, 
if I had to make an adjustment on my quilt, if I rolled it or tightened it up to get some wrinkles out, then I would need to go and replace my pattern or my design. Um, know that any adjustments that you make will throw off your placements. So if you think, <laughs> and I, again, I'm speaking from experience, <laughs> I've been there, done that. Um, if you have, you know, turned it just once, it will throw that design off and just don't want to make any adjustments. Once you've placed it, make sure it's, you don't turn your poles or lean on the rails or anything like that um, because, it, like I said, it'll throw that design off. So now we're just going to go in the center, plus, plus. And now we'll go to next and we'll hurry and do my outside. And I know I'm doing a lot of, I, I'm just talking a lot, and, but any adjustment that you make, it will just throw that design off. So now I've completed my fabric comp. I've gone all the way around it and we're going to tap on OK right here at the bottom right. And now I'm ready to quilt and sew. So I'm just going to move over here to where I think it's going to start pretty close and now remember I showed you my single stitch and because I've adjusted I jogged the needle down I want to jog it back up and then I want to make sure I do my single stitch because it's got to find its rotation and so that's what it's going to do. I'm going to come in the toolbox this time. Okay see how it did a single stitch and I was able to pull up my threads and now I'm just going to make sure I have my scissors I'm going to tap on sew. No, oh, I wasn't that close. <laughs> All right, and we'll just let it quilt here and do its thing. But while it's doing its thing, um, I just want to reiterate how easy it is to quilt with borders and corners and to make your placements. There's so much to learn, and we're working on the help files right now, but Till we have those done, you're just gonna have to put up with me teaching you tips and techniques as we move along. So after I'm done with this segment, I'm going to do a segment on um, borders and corners without using the gold features. And I'm really excited about that because I think you'll have a fun time seeing the differences and, and seeing how the process works because this, the way I'm going to teach you next without the border gold features is how you would use borders and corners if you had beginnings. And so it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I can't even ask you if you have any questions because <laughs> this is pre-recorded. So anyway, just bear with me and we'll let this sew and, and then we'll move on to our outer border and then we're going to turn our quilt and do the center sections uh, of each side. And you'll say, well, why don't you do those as you're quilting on the way down? Well, I'm gonna explain to you when I get to that portion of it. And so hang, bear with me and we'll get to that portion. I notice that with my needle being down, how much more accurate my fabric comp is, it's made a big difference. A huge difference because I'm right there next to it and it didn't come up out of the the seam, away from the seam. It's right there on it. You don't even want to touch your quilt and be there by it um, as you're in the old days <laughs> to make sure it stayed in the area. You're always there scooching your seam away. <laughs> So it would pull, keep it within the seams, but with fabric comp, it eliminates that. As long as you're accurate. Oh, and by the way, I like double battings, and this is just a wall hanging that's going to hang on my door. Just have one half of a star to do, and then we'll move to our outer border. There we go. All right, now we're finished, okay? So I'm just gonna tug on my thread here. 
give it a little tail and then pull it forward. Again, this is how you make a tail underneath. You're just going to pull it forward and you're going to hold on to this string here and you can tap on your single stitch up here and if you hold on to this and pull it away it'll pull up that bottom thread and you're good to cut right there to the very tip of that and now you're not going to have any dangling threads underneath so now i can tap on finished in this area right here and now i'm finished and i'm going to place my outer border so which is what I was doing at the very first. <laughs> All right, so notice I've kind of marked my edge. So I just kind of want to come up here and mark right here on the very edge of my quilt. Because it's, you can see that it's not on as straight or, you know, it's kind of wavy. So I'm going to go back up here to my placements. I'm going to change from get patterns to my placements. I've already have my patterns. So I'm going to tap on my top left, and it says, oh, the pattern is outside the safe area. It's really not. So once I align it, it won't be. Now I'm going to go to my inner and do it. It just thinks because the pattern was down here, and then I started placing the design, it was pushing it up out of the safe area, and that's why it was doing that. So now I'm going to go over here and do my left side. All right. Down. So now I can go and get my patterns. I want to do my corner first. And now I could do my border. All right, it's good to go. Instead of one, it added two into it. That autofill is really nice. And so now I can tap on, so I can do my needle jog. So let's do my needle jog. Okay, so I don't want to go down any further. Ooh, that's pretty. I just need to do it up one. And now I can go sew all. I'm going to quickly do my fabric comp. Come up here to my plugins and move along the edge. And now I'm just kind of moving along the edge, kind of in the inside. And notice how it's really changed. <laughs> I really have a dip in there. It's all good. Now I go into next. Quickly do this, and then next. It's amazing how you think you get your quilt on nice and straight, but as you're doing fabric comp, <laughs> you can see it pull it in, you can pull it out. It's just crazy how with rolling the quilt, it just changes the way it um, lays on your quilt because you're starting to get add more and more layers to it. One side, especially if you have a lot of bulk, can roll a little more uneven. That's why all these tools are so nice to have. And if I get talking and I just lose my place, just stop me. Okay, so now we're all okay. Notice how it just really pulled it. So we're gonna say, okay, and we're going to move over here. I'm, this time I'm going to the toolbox just to remind you where the single stitch is. I'm going to do my single stitch and that fix the rotation so the needle is right where it should be. And I'm going to tap on sew. And we'll get this quilted. It's so tempting to want to lean on it and see what it's doing. I have to stop myself. <laughs> So I want you to notice with fabric comp, because I have my needle down, 
how much more even it's staying. Much better than the top. So, I like to show you the, the tools, the tips and techniques so that you can understand why one way works better than the other. Uh, by the way, this is a purchase pattern. Um, not sure where we purchased it from, but <clears throat> I want to let you know that it's not one of our designs. Um, I think it might be an Ambright design, so if you like it, head to Ambright website and pick it out. Almost there. We have to do our one half of the star, and then we're going to cut our quilt and I'm going to turn it first of all cut my threads make sure I get them cut all right remember again just pull on the threads give yourself a tail move it back keep holding on to it and now you can now I'm going to show you another thing if you tap on finished it changes my screen from quilt motion to the regular sewing screen. So now I can use the buttons. There you go. So another way to pull up your thread. Okay, so now I'm just going to move this off to the side. All right, I'm going to take my clamps off. And because I used a full length of the fabric, I'm going to cut it off as I turn it. So I'm just going to lay these up. So I got my good cutting scissors. <clears throat> so I kind of want to let it unroll here just a little bit and I want to try and make it as even as possible as I'm turning. I want to give myself enough so that I can roll it but I don't want too much. Okay. So I'm just going to cut it right here. Actually, yeah, I'll just cut it right here. And notice how I have enough on my sides that I can attach it again. So now we're getting to the part where I've got to explain why you don't want to quilt all the way down um, for your borders. Couple reasons. Number one, I don't like to stop and start all the way down my quilt. So if you're quilting the sides, you're going to have to quilt one section at a time. And how hard is that for you to size your design correctly? And then you have a start point and a stop point all the way down. Now, if you were free motion quilting and you could um, sew your design, all right, so now I'm just going to undo this, and now we're going to turn it, and we'll do our center section. All right, so let me just unpin this, and then we'll... And I want to pin both, as I turn it, my top and my bottom, because I want that tension on it. So... Just going to turn it this way. Going to. You don't really need to find your center on this, but we're going to, because it'll be off. So, because we'll be just using that. So, kind of want to. I want to find my center so that I can pin it to my leaders correctly. So, because I have a double batting. I'm just going to mark it right here and on the bottom I want to make sure that I'm finding my center as well. It'll make it much easier for you to align it correctly using your leaders. All right. Now that I have my pen as my center and because my batting <laughs> is up and off, I'm going to cut that section off. So 
you know, mark it right here. And I want to just cut this little section off because I push this up in there. It'll just make it easier for me to pin on my bottom and my top. Oh. And then I'll make sure that my backing doesn't get caught up underneath. So just a couple of little adjustments that we're making. All right. Now I've done my top. Let's get that quickly pinned on. I have my pins here. And I'm going to I'm going to start with my center center. So notice right here I have um, my center marking. It's this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and align my pin. I'm just going to mark it just like this. So I know that's my center. Right here. And another one. And I'll put one more in. Okay. Quickly do this one. Looks like I'm going to need a few more pins. I'll quickly come over here and do this one side. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to use my bottom pin, find my center. Lots of years and lots of practice. I'm pretty good at the pinning, but it sure be nice to come up with a system that did it itself. Nah, we're not there yet. And zippers, I think they're an extra step. But you put it on how you feel comfortable putting on. This is all about you and how you like to quilt. I'm just showing you the tools that are available. Then I want you to use those tools how you like to use them. All right. All right. So now we're ready to roll up. I want to make sure all my wrinkles are out of my quilt as I'm rolling it. I don't want to roll it too far because I want to make sure that there's enough area that allows me to quilt. So I'm going to lock this into place, making sure all my wrinkles are out. I'm going to lock this into place. And now I'm going to just roll it up this way. And now it allows me to quilt my top and my bottom. Okay. So now let me lock this into place. See how nice and easy that was? Well, I thought it was easy. You may have other ways that you like to do it. Okay, so now I can quilt the center section and do my top and my bottom. Okay, so now this is going to be the top of the quilt. I'm going to move this back over. on it. There we go. There we go. I just want to make sure my 
my backing's nice and smooth. And I don't need my quilt clips on it because it's rolled up underneath. So it's nice and tight. So remember, my rule of thumb is that we're going to quilt the center section first. All right? So we're going to see how it turns out. All right. So as I'm placing my borders, I still want to place it correctly. So I want to go back up to, I want, let's just reset. Reset all. Okay, so it took my design away and everything. So now I want, I'm not working on the bottom border any longer. I'm working on the top. And yes, we know that we have to replace our, our pattern because now I'm going to replace it. And this time I want to work from the center section. I don't want to work from top to bottom because I want to do this one first and then this one. And it's the same way down underneath. So we're going to come and do this one first. And I'm going to come and set my pattern. And I want to do my needle jog. I just want to put it down. Just let's see one more. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to place my top left. Because I've already quilted some, you're asking, well, you didn't start that way. Well, because none of this was quilted. Um, and so that's why I want to do this section first, because I want to push any wrinkles that I might have up out this direction. So I'm going to quilt this thinner section first and then move up out and do that one next. Okay? So that's my way of thinking. If you don't want to do it that way, by all means, quilt how you want to quilt. It's just fine. Now we're going to place that. Now I'm going to go to my intersection. And I'm going to tap on the center one. And I'm going to align it now. And now I'm going to come over and do this one. Align. And then Okay, so now I want to set my, my margins. And so in the setting of the margins, we want to do a custom border area. And so where I stop sewing right here, I'm going to move my needle right over that. And I'm going to tap on my left edge. And then I'm going to move over to where I started sewing right here and I'm going to set my right edge. So that's my little area that for my custom border, okay? So now I can go in to get my patterns and instead of the corner, I'm just doing the border section. So I'm just going to tap on border and I'm going to tap on this and tap open. And see, that's my custom border. So that's what I'm going to quilt. Easy, all right? So now I am ready to quilt. I'm ready to tap on sew wall. And I'm ready to come into my plugins. And I can skip the sides and everything because I just have the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go in the fabric comp and I'm just going to move along the top here just real quick, especially in this area. And I'm going to just quickly move right along the seam. And I can next, 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 and I can come along this bottom seam. And I can tap on it. Okay. And that's allowing me to do my fabric comp right along the seams. Okay. And now I'm ready to say, okay. And let's just pull up my, because I know where it's going to, it's supposed to start right here at the tip. So I can go into my toolbox, tap on single stitch, pull up my thread. All right. And hoping that it just, I placed it nice and accurate. So let's tap on sew. Oh, nice.
even connected by stars. Cool, huh? All right. So it's worth turning your quilt. Now, I'm going to go um, and do the rest of them, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Um, so I'll show you one more time how to do the custom border. I'm going to tap on finished. I'm going to use my buttons this time to pull up my bottom thread. Remember, hang on to it and you can cut all the way to that. Look how good that looks. I mean, you know, I have a few little tails here, but man, pretty, pretty and close. So now we're going to do our custom border on the top and our fabric comp. And what I'm going to do is go up into my toolbox because I want to remove all of it. And I'm going to tap on reset. Now I'm going to replace it because now I have to for this top border, okay? So I reset all. Now I'm going to come up to my top. Oops. Um, right here. And tap on it. Oh. Why does it not like my placement? Ooh, I bet I'm out of the safe area. Because when I turned it and I repositioned my quilt, now I'm out of my safe area. So it doesn't like it. So, not a problem. We have our toolbox up here at the top. We're going to tap on set safe area. So now it's going to allow me to reset the safe area. Because remember, I turned it so it's pushed my quilt down this direction. So I need to reset my safe area. And it's not a big deal. So all we did was went into the toolbox, and now we're going to reset the safe area. And I can see that I'm really close to it, so I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit to make sure that as I move across, we have clearance from top to bottom. And we do. Okay. So now I can reset my safe area. So now I want to tap on the center box. This is what I was talking about. Tap on that. Now I've set my width, now I'm going to set my depth. And again, this is just reinforcing that if you make any adjustments to your quilt, that you're going to have to reset your safe area or your placements and how important that is. Okay, I was able to quilt this section because it is in my safe area um, and that's why. But once I moved out this way, I pushed the quilt over so far that it was out of the safe area and it didn't like it. Now, I should be able to go up here, right here, and tap. And see, now it likes it. So if you get that invalid placement, it's probably because you're out of your safe area and you need to go and reset it. All right, and now I'm going to come and do my inner. And then let's do my needle jog. Okay, right there. And, and I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. Because Brian, I might have to wake him up. All right, now I'm just aligning it. So if you see one of those lines at an angle, it means that you've missed a placement step. So go back and redo it so it's correct, okay? So see, it's kind of at an angle. Oh well, that's what fabric comp is for. And so now I'm going to come in and tap on set margins. Now remember, I'm setting my custom border. So I'm going to move up here to where I stopped sewing on the left side. And I'm going to tap on my left edge, and then I'm going to move over here to my right side, and this is where it started sewing, and I'm going to tap on the right edge. That's my custom area. Now I'm going to go and get my patterns, and I don't want the corner, I just want the border fill. And so I'm going to come in here and select my border fill, tap on open. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. So now I'm ready to come in and tap on Sew All. I guess it makes it so easy not to have to guess and the sizing and everything. It's automatically doing all those adjustments. Now remember, up here in the plugins, I'm going to tap on my fabric comp. I don't have to go all the way. And I can just start right here, 
making sure that I'm within the field. I'm going to tap on it. Tap. 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 Now I want to make next, next, next. I just want to go along the bottom line here, making sure that it's filled in that area. And with the beginnings and doing borders and corners without fabric comp, it's kind of up to you to get your quilt on nice and straight. So now I can say, okay, we're ready to quilt. And now we're ready to sew this area. And because again, I know where it's supposed to start, I can quickly do my single stitch. Okay, there we go. It's because I turned my needle down. So now it's ready to sew. Almost done, and um, I'll just get down to the bottom. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, for the bottom, I'm just resetting all. I'm going to turn it so it's the bottom section. Yes, we know we have to replace it. Now I'm just going to do this little bottom border right here. Now, you have these little locks right here. You can do vertical locks or lock border width. If I tap on the vertical locks, I'm going to just show you what it does. It will actually align it. It'll line the little bar with it because we're just quilting the center section we're not really worried about right here. You can leave that on. So now I just want to do this outer one. And now I don't have to. It moved it forward and now I can just go do this inner one right here. And vertical locks. Notice how it keeps it all nice and straight. So I can go do this outer one here. and then the inner one. And so that will keep you all nice and straight with my inner, okay? Now I can go in and set my margins. I kind of want to turn my needle down so I get it correct. So I'm going to push my needle down. I'm going to, I didn't cut my threads. So I'm going to set my margins. So I'm going to set my left edge right here where it stopped, or where it stopped, yes. And then where it started, my right edge. Now I've got my area, now I can go and get my pattern. And I'm going to get my border. I'm going to tap on it and open. And see, set my little border area. Now I can sew all. Quickly go and do my fabric comp and my plugins, fabric comp. I'm just going to move along the edge here. Tap, tap, tap. 
next, next, next. Say okay. And we can come and sew. Right. I'm going to do a single stitch. And okay. Tap on sew. Okay, we're on our last border. Um, keep forgetting where I'm at, so I'm going to quickly place it, and we're done. Nice, nice few hours work. So let's go in and let's make sure that we're reset all. And remember, I'm keeping my vertical lock on. So I'm going to come up here and. I'm going to tap on that one. It's going to align that one. I'm going to come to my inner one. And then let's put my little jog down. So there we go. And my inner. See how it locked it in place? Now, I don't suggest you leave your vertical lock on um, when you're first placing your borders and a corner. You shouldn't be using that. Um, but when you're quilting the center section, yeah, you can use it. There we go. So now I want to set my margins. Remember, setting the margin area is the custom border. So we'll have my left side and my right side. And now I'm going to come in and get my pattern. Reminder that it's just the border pattern, not the corner. And that's where I'm going to be quilting. Tap on sew wall. And now we're going to come into my plugins, my fabric comp. I want to move along my outer edge right here. So I'm going to just tap, tap, tap. Okay, now I want to say next, next, next. I want to move along my intersection. Okay, list it, you can say okay, you can move it up and tap on my single stitch. All right, and let's finish this quilt, well, besides the binding. I'm going to let this finish quilting, but I just really appreciate you joining me, and I've had a lot of fun. I always learn as I'm showing you processes in quilting, and so 
I encourage you to give me, send me your feedback on what you would like to see, what you would like to learn, so we can plan future um, webinars and for what you want to um, learn. So make sure that you send me all this great information um, to Carla with a K at graceframe.com. And I'm just going to let this finish, but it's been a lot of fun. It's always a great holiday when you get to quilt. And when you get to quilt, and not, you're not under pressure to get it done. And with borders and corners, it's just going to make it quicker and easier. And so if you don't have it and you want it, you do have to have the pro version of the software. And it is a subscription, uh, but well worth it. So make sure you give your dealer a call, or you can call us to find your ne nearest dealer, and we'll let you know. And our number is 800-264-0644, or you can go to our website and find your dealer online. Um, but I encourage you to try it, and I'll see you next time when we'll do Borders and Corners a totally different way. Thank you. Take care. Have a good fourth. Bye.